When I reflect back over the last 10, 12 years with Claire House, I am completely overwhelmed by the sheer number of people that we have touched. I was there before conception. I think maybe I was there at conception. I, I helped get it started, really, by writing a check, frankly. And also, I had the chance to work and be involved at the very ground level. The groundbreaking in 2008 was a hot, hot summer day. We all stood out in the sun to dig the first hole for building Clare House. There were always the right people at the right time with the right skills, the right passion, the right commitment that really allowed this place to become what it is today. The trip to Ohio when they told to, to look at what we thought was our model hospice, when they told us we would never succeed. The time when we went to talk to a major funder and, and one of the initial visits and Kelly and I both left in tears. The time when we met with the neighborhood to see if we could rent a house there and they were hostile to us. I could go on and on, but those times gave us strength and strengthened us in our mission. It, it's amazing how much was done in a short amount of time and that was really a commendation to the mission and to how many people supported Claire House. have the opportunity every day to hear the thanks of our guests and family members and I wish that funders could hear that as much as I do because it is every day. Everyone that walks in these doors oohs and awes over the house but then when they actually experience the care they are amazingly supported by the love and compassion that they feel and they're overwhelmed by the fact that it's free. I know that the uh, that the the board and the uh, and the staff and the management know where every penny is. I just feel very confident when I make a donation that it's going to be put to proper use. The Albert and Hayda Bartelmas Foundation partners with Claire House because in my heart I truly believe that Doc and Mrs. B would have embraced everything that Claire House is, and everything they respected and believed in is mirrored in Claire. Not long ago, I was associated with a hospice that actually chose to close. One of the things we had to do was decide what to do with the dollars that were left in our foundation, and it was a unanimous decision that these remaining dollars should go to Clare House, where we knew they would be spent to give a loving home to people who needed it. We've had so many people at Clare House that have volunteered here, that have worked here, that have been on our board, that have supported us financially and supported us with their time, talent, and treasure. And knowing that all of those lives have been touched as well and, and knowing that people are doing that because it makes a difference in their lives personally is a wonderful thing to reflect on. When I come to Clare House, I come to feed the birds. So they call me the bird man. But the people thank me for filling the bird feeder because they really enjoy watching the birds feed. I like to say when Clare House came into my life, it was a God thing because my mother-in-law in Virginia was in a memory unit and I needed to find a better place for her for her passing. And when we arrived, I felt her totally relax. She passed away in the most peaceful way. I have a strong belief in no one being alone when they die, and that is what spurred me to want to volunteer here. I volunteer one day a week at Clare House. It is one of the best days of my week. When I think back to that very first guest that we had, you know, we waited 
for days for the phone to ring for that referral, not knowing if anybody was ever actually going to call and want to use our services. And when that first phone call came and that first guest came, it was unbelievably satisfying. She actually taught us a whole lot and she was very vocal about what we were doing right and what we were doing wrong. I remember a patient and family interaction that was very profound. She was an elderly lady and one of her sons was incarcerated. I was somewhat surprised when the prison van drove up and there was an armed guard who escorted the prisoner and he began to cry and he told her in just a few simple words, he said, Mom, I am so sorry for anything that I've ever done to disappoint you or to hurt you. I'm so very sorry. And she said, it's okay, son, I love you. There was a gentleman named Tommy who allowed me to hold him while he cried about the fact that he was gonna to have to leave his 10-year-old daughter behind. There was Jody, who laughed all the time. She came and stayed with us several times for short stays and always insisted that it was time for her to come when we were low on funds because her friends would donate in her honor, which was true, they did. We had so many guests and every single one of them left something. I could tell, I could tell a two-second story about probably 1,100 different people very quickly. I received a phone call from a fella who said that he believed his father was here. And the father said, you know, this is a good thing. My son hasn't talked to me in 14 years, and I would really like to see him. He said, you know, Mike, this is a great place. This is a good thing, and what you all do is very important. We had one guy who come in who was homeless and didn't have any family either. And then I realized that when I got down stooped down and got eye to eye with him instead of standing over him talking. He seemed to trust me then, and then he let me uh, get him a cup of coffee where he wouldn't even look at me. It's been great to be part of something new, something growing that nobody had ever thought of doing or would think it would be possible. Just to see the, the humbleness and to see the, the sheer strength that I see in these people that are dying and facing their own mortality and welcoming me into the intimate part of their life as they leave this world. That is more of a privilege um, to be a part of it than I could ever express. They're like staying at your aunt's house, you know, and you don't feel good and and Aunt Evelyn's gonna take care of you and she's gonna fix you a bowl of soup because you, you got a cold and that's what Claire House is like. It's like staying at a loved one's house when you're sick. The environment is such that, that I really feel like it's made me better. It, it's made life easier to live because I wasn't living where I was at. I was in an existence and a poor one at that. We have provided 23,000 days of care in the last 10 years. And to know that we've touched all those lives, been a part of all of those family stories is incredibly gratifying. It's an honor and a privilege and something that, you know, I know is a very special opportunity that we've all had. For me, Claire House is respect and respect at the most important and most significant point in time. Claire House is a passion of mine. Claire House is love and nurturing and family. Claire House is everything I need. It was everything I needed when I needed it. And it's a gift from God. It has given me inspiration to live as well in my living as Claire House takes care of its guests in their dying. Claire House is extraordinary.